Okay. Hello, what is up my fellow book lovers? I feel like this angle is weird. Hold please. I feel like it was a little too zoomed on my face. A little bit better, a little bit better. Hello you guys, welcome to today's video. I'm super, super excited because I'm actually giving you my summer book recommendations. And these are books that I've actually read and that I actually enjoy. They're all three and a half or more. I'm very happy to be doing this video because I love summer reading. Reading romances in the summertime just hits different, you know? So I decided why don't I just give you all my favorite summer recs? to get you through the summer. Now, like I said, these are books that I've actually read. So there's actually a lot of books still on my TBR that are summer related that I have not read yet. So if there's a popular book out there you don't see recommended in this video, it's because I haven't read it, so. And these are books that I physically own. So nothing on Kindle Unlimited. I do have a different video for that. I will link it. Let's just get started, okay? Let's start with a classic. And that is The Choice by Nicholas Sparks. I haven't read this in years. Let me tell you, the first time I read it, I absolutely fell in love with it. I loved the movie from the beginning. And then I decided to read the book and I loved the book even more. So basically, if you've seen the movie, the book and the movie are very similar, but there's not a lot of like, they strayed away from a lot of things, but they also didn't. It takes place in the summertime. It takes place in North Carolina. It just gives really great summer vibes, honestly. Like this is like one of the OG covers or something like that. Like literally Nicholas Sparks is on the back. But yeah, it follows Travis and Gabby. Both live in small town North Carolina. So it's told from like third person POV. Uh, but honestly, I should reread this. I haven't reread this book in so long. So I'm gonna have to do that. Another Nicholas Sparks book that I highly recommend, which is Dear John. Again, this is this is another one I haven't read in so long, but I absolutely, again, love this book. This one is also takes place in the summertime. This is a young love, young romance. I actually really want to get the new cover for Dear John because this has been my favorite novels by Nicholas Sparks. My, not my favorite movie. Like the, the movie does not do this book any justice whatsoever. So I really want to get the new one because the new one's actually really, really pretty. I highly recommend, obviously follows John and Savannah and they have this really fun little summer romance before John has to go back because he's getting deployed. This is actually kind of a heartbreaking one, honestly, because it actually takes place in the town that I live in, which I love. Because seeing like the difference in like him writing about it here with like all the real places that exist and then seeing the differences in like how it was back then when this was written compared to now, because like now I'm like, like, oh my god that's still so true but like it's way different now compared to here next up we have another young adult romance that i absolutely love and that is a thousand boy kisses this one is just such like a light this one's also really sad okay i don't want to say light this one made me cry but this one is just like such an easy like quick paced summer read. This one follows Poppy and Rune and basically Poppy and Rune have been like in love with each other since they were little kids and have been together but then they're like ripped away from each other because of Rune's dad's job and then they lose touch and then they come back together when Rune comes back. You watch their like love story like re-unfold and it's just like this beautiful heartwarming, not the heartwarming, this is a sad book. This is a really sad book but I still highly recommend that you read it. It does take place in the summertime as well but yeah just a quick little summer read if you want your heart ripped out of you. This is the one for you. <laughs> this next one is a super super fun like silly goofy read and that is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Now this does not take place in the summertime but this this does take place on a tropical island. I think they go to Hawaii. I don't remember. They go somewhere on a honeymoon. But basically this is a fake dating and enemies to lovers little romance. And it's really funny. We're two sworn enemies on the Hawaiian trip of a lifetime. Anything can happen. Maybe even love in this romantic comedy. So romantic comedy, they end up going to Hawaii on a honeymoon, which isn't their honeymoon, obviously. They take the bride and the groom's honeymoon because something happens to them where they can't go. So they're like, oh, you guys need to go. So they went and fake dating, and it's lovers, like I said, it's just such a fun, silly, goofy read that like you just like can't help but like binge this. Okay, I remember I binged this book, okay? It was so, so good. I had such a good time while reading it and I, Highly, highly recommend, <laughs> but you guys read it too. Next up, this is another book that I just read, and that is Rule Book by Sarah Adams. This is another really fun, silly, goofy, quirky read. You've seen like one of my more recent videos, I talked about this book. Basically, this is just like such like, like I said, silly, goofy summer read. He's a professional football player, she's his agent, 
and they actually end up having a wild night in Vegas and getting married. It's a fake dating and a enemies to lovers because they're exes. So it's a fun time. It's a fun read. They go on a nice tropical vacation in it. It's so fun. Sarah Adams just knows how to be like silly and goofy and like make things so like unrealistic that like you love it. But like she just makes you have such a fun time while you're reading it that you don't even care. You don't even care how like silly, goofy, quirky it is. Well, you do because you love it. I love it. Silly goofy quirky time. Anyways, read this one. Archer's Voice. If you have not read Archer's Voice yet, you need to. Okay, I absolutely loved this book. It was so, so good. This is another one that takes place in the summertime. Brie travels to Pelion, Maine because she's having enough tough time. She's really going through a lot of shit right now and she just kind of wants to get away. You know, in this really small like beach town, she ends up meeting Archer. Archer is silent, he cannot speak. And like, he's kind of like this town's outcast, but she like, and him like, have this like beautiful like friendship that grows into this like beautiful romance and nobody just understands him because people just like see him as this outcast because he can't speak but it's literally not even that like it's literally like i don't even know how if i'm explaining it right but this one is such a wonderful story i absolutely love this the only weird thing about this book though is that the characters don't read at the age they are so they're actually pretty young in this book where i'm like mm, y'all are reading like to be late 20s possibly 30s like i could see but like they're written as like 22 i think like 21 22 years old which is so weird to me so that's the only complaint i have with this book but either way this is a really really wonderful summer romance it's gonna put you in all the freaking feels okay i absolutely loved this book and i highly highly recommend next two books i have are actually by the same author which is carly fortune and that is every summer after and the summer will be different now every summer after i read i think two summers ago i don't remember definitely wasn't last year i don't think this is her first novel i like this one but i don't like love it but it does give you really awesome like summer vibes especially like this friends to lovers you know like spending summers at the lake house and stuff like that six summers to fall in love one moment to fall apart a weekend to get it right so basically this is told in a now and then timeline and say Sam and Percy, they have been friends for years and every summer they go to the summer home, they hang out, basically like falling in love with each other. One night makes everything fall apart and then they just have to repair it in the now timeline. I'm not doing a good job of explaining any of these books. I hope that you still wanna read them. <laughs> I didn't love it. I'm not a big fan of the friends to lovers trope, it's fine. I just find it a little boring. This one is a bit of a slow burn. There is a other like micro trip in here that a lot of people ended up hating, which is one of the big things that made me not like the book. Other than that, like the summer vibes really, really great. So I recommend it for that. I feel like it just brings like a lot of nostalgia. And then her other book, which is one I actually just read, This Summer Will Be Different. Again, this one gave immaculate summer vibes, okay? The summer vibes in this one were absolutely amazing. And this one I really, really enjoyed. I really liked the relationship between the two characters. This one was a now and then timeline as well. This one starts from a one night stand. What happens is that Lucy and Felix don't realize who each other are and Lucy's best friend is Felix's sister. Felix's sister is like, the only thing I ask is don't fall in love with my brother before she meets him, right? And then she doesn't realize that who she has a one night stand with is Felix, who is the brother. And it's like, they're at this like difficult crossroads and it goes over the course of a few different summers, just like really like showcasing this love these two characters have for each other. And it gives like these like perfect like summer romance vibes because they just like, you can see the tension and the want within both of them, but like them both trying to do the right thing because they know like the way that her sister would feel about it and they don't want to like risk her friendship and as well as her relationship with her brother and stuff like that. So I do highly recommend this one. Summer small town vibes. Next two books I have are by the infamous Emily Henry. Let's talk about Beach Read for a second. I haven't read Beach Read in a while, but I do remember when I read it for the first time, I did really like it. Didn't like fall head over heels for Emily Henry. Actually, every book that I read afterwards, I did not really like at all. That's why for other books, are not in this pile because I actually didn't really like them. But Beach Read was really, really fun. Gus and January, I think are just like the perfect match for each other, honestly. It takes place in the summer, takes place in a beach town, like a small called Bear Shores, I think. Bear Shores in like Michigan or something like that. I don't know. But this one was actually like a really nice, like in-depth kind of read. And I don't remember a lot about it now that I think about it, but I do remember really liking this one. And I do recommend that you read this. And my camera battery, is flashing. I love that for me. Um, I'm gonna charge the battery and I'll be back. 
All right, and we are back. It's been honestly probably only like 30, 40 minutes, but I am a poor girl and cannot afford more than one camera battery. So Girly Pop had to wait for her charge. All right, but let's continue with some of the summer book recs that I was talking about. I just finished talking about Beach Read, and next up we have Funny Story by Emily Henry. This one I just read and I absolutely fell in love with it. This was like, this is like a 4.5 for me, for an Emily Henry book, okay? And I literally, I had such low expectations for this, but this one hit me over the head with like how good it was. Like this is a genuine rom-com. This does take place in the summertime where it takes place like leading up to the summer. Like I think it starts out May, continues through there. But yeah, this was, this is such a fun little summer rom-com. Like genuinely, if you love Emily Henry and you have not read Funny Story yet, you absolutely need to. Even if you're someone who's not an Emily Henry fan, take it from me, the person who was not an Emily Henry fan, that you absolutely need to read this book. This is just so fun. This is a, as a roommate trope, it's fake dating. It's just a good Good time okay it's just such a good time I was audibly laughing while reading this book and that never happens to me especially during an Emily Henry book I mean like there are other times where I do laugh audibly at books um, because of the things that they say but this like had me actually laughing like this is a true rom-com okay so basically the story follows Miles and Daphne and Miles and Daphne were both in relationships but unfortunately their partners left them for each other and now their partners well their ex-partners are now engaged Daphne ended up having to move in with Miles because she used to live with her her ex-fiance. Now she needed somewhere to stay, so she lives with Miles. Her and Miles come up with this scheme of we're gonna fake date to make them jealous. My one thing that I do love about this book, which I've talked about in other reviews, go ahead and watch some of my other videos. This one I did talk about in like two or three other videos. The trope wasn't like the only driving force for the plot, which is something I absolutely love in a book. If you guys need a fun summer rom-com, please. Please, please, please read this one because this is such like a light, fluffy rom-com. Yes, there's some like deeper undertones because there's always deeper undertones in every Emily Henry book, but this one definitely felt light and fluffy compared to the other ones. The next books I'm gonna talk about is another series and that is the Knock Em Out series by Lucy Score. They're chonky. There's some chonky books, okay? But let me tell you, they're a good time. They're a good time. This is overall a four star series for me. My favorite is Things We Never Got Over and then I really like Things We Left Behind, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I kind of hated Things We Hired From The Light. This one is the only book out of every book that I am mentioning that is less than a three stars. And the only reason I'm including it is because it's within this series. But yeah, these are just such fun books. Um, each book follows a different couple. Um, the first one follows Max and Naomi. The next one follows uh, Nash and Lena. This one follows uh, Sloan and Lucian. I'll have a little mystery plot going on in there, but they're just a good time. If you ignore the ages of the characters, this is a good time. If you read this series and think in your brain, they're in their 20s they're in their 20s. I think you can get through it. Because the one thing that really like held me back from I think really loving and absolutely like devouring this series was their age and the way that they acted. Because they're in their 40s. Please explain to me why you're acting that way. You can't. Otherwise, the series is great. It's such a fun time. It's just like a silly goofy time. Okay, I don't have any other way to explain it other than that. It's a silly goofy time. They're worth it whether what I'm saying you believe or not. All right, the next two books I probably should have talked about when I talked about the rule book, but they are two other Sarah Adams books, and one is One in Rome and The Cheat Sheet. So I'll talk about The Cheat Sheet because this is actually the first book. So The Rule Book and The Cheat Sheet are two companion novels. This one follows Brie and Nathan. They're obviously the first couple. Brie is a dancer and Nathan is a professional football player, and they've been best friends for years. I think they've been best friends like child childhood, high school. Something like that. I don't know. They've been friends for a really, really long time, forever in the friend zone. And neither one of them realizes that the other is in love with each other. Did that make sense? I don't know. But they're in love with each other and neither of them realize. So now they have to fake date because of something going on with Nathan. I can't really remember. I have to reread this one. It's on my list to reread. But I read it over a year ago and I absolutely still love this book. Okay, like both of these closed door romances. Um, she's the queen of like, like this, this tension that you could cut with a knife. You know what I mean? Also like the cute banter and like the ridiculousness of it and the cheesiness, like these are, they're cheesy romances. 
they're fun cheesy romances and you have to know that going into them otherwise you're gonna like kind of be like this is ridiculous because they are ridiculous but they're cheesy and she really plays into that like I think that's like her specialty really playing into the cheesiness of them all because she knows that they're unrealistic so I think that's like what makes them so much fun but yeah anyways I, I I think you should, this is a sports romance, obviously. Like, it's a good old fun time and you absolutely need to read it. One in Rome. This one, again, this is one of my favorite books by her. This, These were both five stars for me. Noah and Amelia's chemistry and connection is just so good. When I tell you I ate this up, oh, she had me eaten out of her hand with this one, okay? I absolutely love it. This is another silly, goofy, fun time. Amelia is a pop star and Noah is just a little pie shop owner and Amelia wants to run away because she's basically think Taylor Swift. Think Taylor Swift, that's Amelia. Amelia is Taylor Swift. And she's like, I just gotta get out of here for a little bit, go somewhere where people don't know me. Or she thinks that nobody knows her. So she's like, I wanna run away to Rome. Like they do in like Breakfast at Tiffany's, I think, or something. I don't know, I've never seen those movies. Something Audrey Hepburn. And the closest place she can go is Rome, Kentucky. And she ends up breaking down outside of his house. And he's like, oh my God, I know who you are. But he's like unfazed. He's like so unfazed and almost just annoyed that this pop star is at his front door. And he's like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's not an enemies to lovers. It's just like kind of like a roommate of convenience because she's stuck there and like she has to get her car fixed and like it won't be fixed for a few days or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Again, it's on my list to reread, but this is such a fun, silly, goofy rom-com. Like you will be giggling and kicking your feet while you're reading this, okay? So highly, highly recommend. Another fun summery vibes. Granted, they're all summery vibes, but this one especially, another young adult romance, and that is The Summer of Broken Rules by Kale Walther. This one takes place in Martha's Vineyard follow Meredith and Meredith is dealing with a lot of grief from the loss of her sister. Her and her family have not been back to Martha's Vineyard since she's passed and basically Meredith's family, all of her like extended family, like her grandparents, her cousins, her aunts, uncle, things like that, all own like houses and land all like right next to each other in Martha's Vineyard, okay? So let me just tell you, they got money, okay? They have money. So if that doesn't tell you Immaculate Summer Vibes, I don't know what does. But basically, the annual vacation at Martha's, Vi Martha, at Martha's Vineyard, the reason they end up going back, and it's also because her cousin is getting married. During that, a lot of fun wedding games are going on, and there's also those really cute groomsmen that she meets. And she's just having a good old time, a good old summer, time okay there's a fun game of assassin that goes on in here and that's a fun little plot line that happens because her and the groomsmen form an alliance so that they can try and win the game of assassin so yeah it just gives off really some cute little innocent summer romance vibes and it really is like kind of nostalgic of a feeling of being that young and then also having this like summer fling if you know what I mean. Absolutely loved this. This was just a good old time. I highly, highly recommend this one. Next up, this was five stars. I still think about this book, still love it. It's amazing. And that is Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. Now this book doesn't take place in the summertime. This does take place, I think, towards the end of a school year. So it kind of like gets summer-ish, but like not really. But either way, this is a young adult romance. Basically, Liz and Wes are neighbors and they're rivals, essentially. The thing is though, Liz has a crush on this guy named Michael, who she finds out is friends with Wes. Even though she literally cannot stand Wes, she is like, broski, I need your help because I want him, I wanna go to prom with him. So I need your help in asking him to prom, getting him to notice me, getting him to like me. Wes is like, hmm, I can use this to my advantage. He's like, for sure. I'll do it. This is just a really light, fluffy, like, ugh, like rom-com. It's so, so good. And like, I don't know, just the nostalgia of being like a teenager and being like this like type of like in love essentially. It's just like, it's just a really nice feeling and I really, really liked it. There are some things that are like deeper undertones within this book. I know Liz deals a lot with like the grief of the loss of her mother and like really trying to like cope and like understand transition to having like a stepmom essentially. Even though her stepmom has been around for a while in the book, she's still just like really getting used to this idea of like, having someone who's not her mom. All around, it's just a fun summer read. Like if you love romance, that which is what this video is about, then you'll love this, okay? Cause this is just such a fun summer romance. I have no other words. Next up, we have The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. This one, I'm almost positive, does take place in the summertime. But basically, this is, it's a romance, but a little bit of summer realism, summer realism, no, magical realism. Clementine West lives 
in an apartment that was given to her by her late grandmother. Once her grandmother, uh, not grandmother, her great aunt. When her great aunt passed away, she was bequeathed this apartment. And the only thing though with this apartment is that it does slip in and out of time. So it slips seven years into the past sometimes, just like out of nowhere, just randomly. One of the times that Kellum time comes home, the apartment has slipped seven years into the past and some man that she has no idea who he is, is there. And she's like, what are you doing in my apartment? And this guy's like, it's seven years in the past. And he's like, I'm living here. What do you mean? When Clementine leaves the apartment, she is in the present timeline where she does end up meeting the guy from seven years in the past, which is just like a really fun little storyline. And like this book like just made me feel so giddy and happy and like seeing the like in the present to her going back in the past because that like the past is happening for her right now in her apartment. But all of the stuff that they're talking about and they're going through, he lived seven years ago. Like, so he knows everything that's going on and what's gonna happen. He lived it seven years ago and she's living it right now. So it's like such like this weird like dynamic, but it's just like this like, it's just really wonderful to see them like grow close together in two different points of their lives, essentially, or watching her like grow close to this man who like she's seeing at different points. That's all I gotta say about it. It's just a fun little, fun little time. It deals a lot with grief though. That's a really common theme I feel like within all these books is that they deal a lot with grief because she is grieving, you know, her great aunt. Yeah, read this book. It's wonderful. I gave it a five stars. Next up, Wildfire by Hannah Grace. I just read this one as well. I ate this shit up, okay? I absolutely loved this book. It was such a good time, okay? If you were someone who went to camp a lot as a kid and like summer romances or just like that like nostalgic, like that nostalgic feeling of like being at summer camp, this is for you. Because let me tell you, Russ and Aurora, they start out because they end up having a one night stand. Next day, they find out, oh look, we're camp counselors at the same sleepaway camp. They're like, oh my God, thinking they were never gonna see each other again. And that's where it goes from there. They, it just really gives off like such nostalgic summer vibes because like you live like through Russ and Aurora, obviously, of like them going through this like summertime together, like trying to navigate their relationship of like, we slept together, but we're not anything. Now we're friends. And now it's like, oh, well like I've never felt this way about anyone before type of thing. And then it's just like this great little summer love, summer romance, and it's great. And I absolutely loved it. Such a good time. So I highly, highly recommend this one as well, because like I said, it's such a good time. Russ, amazing. Okay, Russ is amazing. And Aurora, she's kind of cool too. I kind of like her. I like, I really liked Aurora. She was, she was a little funky, spunky little girl. And the last book that I have, I feel like honestly at this point is a no-brainer. If you don't expect me to put this book in a summer romance reads video, I don't think you know me because that is the Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. This is my favorite book ever to date, other than like Fourth Wing, which is a fantasy different genres, completely different spectrums, right? Adam and Olive, they are iconic for me, okay? I absolutely love the love hypothesis. I'm not gonna drone on too much about it because I literally, I think I've talked about this book in like so many videos and I also have a full on like reading vlog, full on spoilers um, of me rereading this book because it's one of my five star reads. You get all my thoughts and feelings throughout the entire book. So go watch that if you haven't, um, cause I talk a lot about it in there. But basically the premise of this book is that Adam and Olive need to fake date basically to one for her trick her friend into thinking that she's not in to this one other guy and then for him he needs to fake date olive because he needs to prove to the school board that he's not gonna leave but obviously you know we all know what fake dating leads to we all know what fake dating leads to let me tell you this is a masterpiece i have never felt the way that i have felt when i've read this book for the first time this is a book i really wish i could read for the first time again because it was just like truly iconic it was truly an iconic moment for me because this is what's flipped my brain into being like, wow, I really liked books, but now I'm obsessed. So this like really flipped my brain and everything I thought about books and everything in general. Read this book. It's iconic for me. I don't know what else to say about it other than go watch the videos where I talk about it constantly. Okay. All right, you guys, but that is literally every single book that I have that I am recommending to you to read this summer because they're all so fun. They're all such fun summer reads and just all such fun little romances. And I just love me a romance, okay? I've been in a romance mood. Obviously, you know, summertime, that's how I always get. Summer romances for me are in full swing. Like you might as well just, I might as well pick up a baseball bat and just be swinging it because that's how I'm feeling, okay? Swinging with these summer romances. I don't even know if that was a good analogy, but it, it probably wasn't. Anyways, all right, but that is it. Like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, some of my fave 
book recommendations. I'm not really good at book recommendations, honestly, because I'm always just like screaming about what books I've recently read and telling everyone to read them if I really like them. But yeah, I hope I did a good job of explaining what these books were about because now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I did. But you know what? I think you're just gonna have to take my word for it because believe me when I say that I loved these books and they were just so fun and that if you're just looking for a good time, pick up one of these books because they're all a good time. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know if you read any of these books or if you have read any of them in the past and you agree with me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social medias as well as subscribing to my channel and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.